What is going on, investors? Hopefully, you guys are doing well out there. Time to charge up your Tesla as the company just reported their Q4 earnings after the bell. I just got off the conference call, made some notes over on Twitter. Talk about some of the things that they talked about on the conference call. We'll take a look at the forward revenue estimates for this company. How bullish or how bearish is Wall Street as it relates to revenue estimates in the upcoming quarters? And what is the likelihood of Tesla meeting these targets? We'll go over the financials as well, line by line, every single one of these lines. Just kidding. We won't go through every one of these lines. We'll pick out the most important ones. We'll take a, a close look at the company's energy storage business, the profitability there, the growth rate, as that business definitely humming right along. We'll take a look at deferred revenue, which gives you kind of a forward demand in terms of pre-orders for Tesla. We'll have a look at the balance sheet and the cash flow statement as well. Look at most of this on a quarterly basis, maybe stretch it out for the full year on a few cases. Now with Tesla, I am seeing in the after hours, shares are moving lower at the current time, down a little over five and a half percent, almost five and three quarters percent as this stock has just simply gone nowhere over the past four years. Well, now, not quite nowhere, but for the most part, you could have bought Tesla at about $200 per share nearly four years, actually over four years ago. You could have bought Tesla shares for about $200 per share. Now, in the meantime, you've gone up over $420 per share and down to 100. So depending on your timing with Tesla will depend on if you are up or down in this investment. Certainly a volatile share in stock to say the least. Now on the conference call, the company did pump up their next gen vehicle without actually pumping it up. They said they didn't really wanna comment on it. It was an earnings call, not really a product announcement, but they did talk about the next gen vehicle a, a, a fair amount. Elon Musk saying that that next gen vehicle, which is a promise to be a quote, we'll, we'll put this in air quotes, a cheaper vehicle, maybe something with a starting price with a two in front of it, 28, 25, somewhere in there, 25,000 is what I'm referencing to. Uh, Elon saying that that vehicle come at the end of 2025 out of the Texas facility. That probably means 2027, considering how bullish uh, Elon Musk has been as it relates to the next gen vehicle. Also, as it relates to the next gen vehicle, which I thought was probably the more interesting aspect of it, is that the machines Tesla is going to use to actually manufacture the next gen vehicle, they don't actually exist. So they're actually going to manufacture these themselves or, or maybe with a partner and the company feels it gives them a large competitive advantage because as it relates to the next gen vehicle Tesla says that the manufacturing process is the competitive advantage that it has there. And so the fact that no other car maker could, you know, maybe immediately copy their manufacturing process could give Tesla a competitive advantage. We'll certainly see. Tesla is absolutely a leveraged play on interest rates dropping because Elon Musk said if interest rates drop quickly, their margins will get better. If they don't, margins won't. I mean, he basically said it like that. So if interest rates drop and they drop rather quickly, I would actually expect Tesla shares to retest highs up at 420 sometime this year. If you get a dramatic drop. Now, Tesla's not going to be the only stock that would benefit, okay? A lot of financial stocks, a lot of refinancing stocks, real estate stocks. There's going to be a lot of stocks they're gonna benefit from interest rates dropping. So I don't want you to just think, oh, well, Tesla's the way to play interest rates dropping. It will be one way to play that. But obviously the downside is if interest rates stay the same or stay a little sticky, there I, I don't think there's any chance Tesla retests the highs any time soon. Elon Musk saying that there's no other car maker interested in full self-driving yet. He noted, I think on the previous conference call that they are interested in licensing full self-driving, very similar to the charging standard, the plug that goes into the car. I, I think there'll be one in the same. I think once you had one manufacturer realize well, my customers can't figure out a, a place to charge their car, we better get on the Tesla standard. Once they figured that out, then all the other car makers fell into place. By 2025, there's going to be no other plug, basically, other than the Tesla one. And I think full self-driving will move into that as well. I do think Tesla has an advantage there. How much money they make licensing that out remains to be seen. Elon Musk said there's a lack of awareness of the Tesla brand in the great country of Japan. And Japan happens to be the third largest market in the world. They talked a little bit about advertising and digital marketing. Sounds like they've had a little bit of success there. Now, now, as it relates to success and forward revenue estimates, Wall Street's expecting another year right around 20% growth rate. That would match what you did this year. It would push Tesla over the $116, $115 billion sales mark. 
and revenue mark. But the questions for investors is, will that be enough to move shares? At still five times sales, pretty richly valued from an automaker per perspective. And so that's where you need those gross margins and that profitability to come in. Because if the profitability doesn't get any better, your forward price to earnings is still gonna look rather rich to most investors. And that's going to limit the kind of the upside potential you see in Tesla shares. Now, as it relates to those automobile revenues you're seeing, they basically have stalled out just 1% growth year over year. On a quarterly basis, you did see a nice little tick up. Their energy storage business up 10% year over year, but I did notice it went flat. Although maybe some of that could be seasonality considering most of their business is wrapped around kind of solar energy and the sun just simply doesn't shine as much in Q4. And so maybe you're less likely to install solar during that period of time, but still solid 10% growth there. Services and other revenue, this is merchandise, used cars, other services up a strong 27% and that is now generating some profits as well. Total revenues for the company up about 3% year over year, but it's balanced off by their operating expenses increasing about 27%. Although if you kind of look at this in more of a narrow focus, you do notice that quarter over quarter, our revenues went from 23.35 up to 25. And look at your operating expenses, they actually went down. So the company still does a nice job controlling costs. Elon Musk, all of his faults, one of them is not being a good operator. This guy's one of the best operating CEOs from just a controlling cost perspective that I think exists in the world. So he's a good steward of the capital over at Tesla. And you do see income from operations quarter over quarter ticking up to over $2 billion, but it is down considerably from a year ago when the gross margins on those vehicles was considerably higher. You look at it from a full year perspective, paints a relatively similar story. Revenues are up 19% year over year, but your costs are up about 22%. So your income from operations slipping from a year ago when they were close to $13.7 billion, now closer to 8.9. But if you wanna go back way in time, all the way back to 2019, this company was losing money from an operating perspective. So things have certainly come a long way over at Tesla. Now, one change that I did notice with the release of the Cybertruck, they're no longer breaking out Model S and Model X, which is the more expensive models that Tesla makes. They're grouping Model S, Model X, and this also, this other model production will include some Cybertruck numbers as well. You are seeing quarter over quarter a nice tick up, but year over year, even with the addition of the Cybertruck, you're down about 12% on what we'll call the quote premium model the kind of 60, 70, $100,000 car that Tesla makes. Obviously, interest rates is tied to that. It's actually a myth that if you're mega wealthy, that you actually pay for your car with cash. Nobody does that. Oftentimes, you're actually leasing them and you're certainly doing it on a payment plan. Very few people I know actually pay for their cars in cash as it's a depreciating asset. You actually don't want to pay for a depreciating asset all up front because cash depreciates in value over time as well. You want to pay with it and that depreciating cash. You wanna buy appreciating assets like real estate, maybe even collectibles and certainly stocks. You wanna pay with that cash up front. Still seeing strong Model 3, Model Y production and Model Y happened to be the best selling car, electric or not, across the board this year. Solar deployed, you did see a disappointment here, down 59%, even quarter over quarter disappointment here. And maybe there is no seasonality to solar deployed as you had 100 megawatts deployed in Q4 of last year, just 41 but your storage business, very solid, 30% growth and consistent where you've been over the last couple of quarters. And here's probably the biggest moat in the company. And we've been saying this for a long time. The biggest moat are the chargers. And that came to realization this year. Once people started buying the other EVs, the Rivians, the Mercedes, the Hondas, the Kias, they realized there is no place to reliably charge that thing. And Tesla is the only company with a large amount of supercharger stations out there. And that is why their charging standard is now out there. And it's another reason why their services and other revenue continues to tick higher. Speaking of the services business, $2.16 billion worth of revenue, $2.1 billion worth of cost, starting to see some profit eked out there. The energy storage business as well, 
which again is going to grow faster. I don't think I don't really care what happens to interest rates this year unless they go all the way back down to zero. Your energy storage business is probably going to grow faster than the automobile business. Revenues there 1.4 billion in the quarter, 1.1 billion in costs. You're generating about 300 million dollars worth of operating income every quarter. It's consistent what we've seen over the past couple of quarters. Company like we said has done a nice job controlling cost, research development, selling and marketing all within a reasonable range, keeping profits relatively in a good place for Tesla. Now on the balance sheet, probably the most interesting thing. Well, first of all, you, you can't just gloss over it. The company has a boatload of cash considering you look at other automakers out there. They have very few liabilities. Part of their liabilities is actually something called deferred revenue, which is essentially kind of reservations for the car. I did see a nice strong pickup here from 2.2 billion in just the last quarter, all the way up to two point, almost $2.9 billion. So you had strong reservations coming in over a Tesla. Maybe some of that has to do with Cybertruck. Once those cars are delivered, I think as they get close to delivered, you can take this deferred revenue and move it up into your to actual recognized revenue. Finally, when you come over to cash flows, operating cash flow sitting about $4.4 billion. Investing activities, which includes mainly CapEx and purchase of some investments, committed about $4.8 billion, more or less cash flow neutral once you line those numbers out. And speaking of neutral, again, stocks basically been in neutral for about four years now, and you're looking for a break higher on Tesla. And that, in my opinion, is going to go inside with interest rates. You get interest rates to rapidly start going down probably sometime March, April, May, June time frame. You see the Fed get really aggressive quarter point, half point drops. I don't think we have any evidence that that's what they'll do, but certainly that's, that is something that could materialize if they want it to. You get that to happen, then Tesla stock will have some uh, like a V-shaped recovery, retest these highs up here. If interest rates stay where they're at for most of the year, even if you only get like a quarter point or a half point drop sometime this year, th this stock is just going to go nowhere. It's just too hard to sell these expensive vehicles to people that don't already have the money for one. It's just simply hard for them to get the money together. And especially when you're looking at car interest rates at seven, eight, nine, ten percent and maybe you already have a decent car already, you're going to stick it out with that car, kind of ride or die with that car until interest rates go back down. Tesla is a leveraged play on interest rates going down. You also want to be careful where you buy the shares because again for the last four years shares have gone nowhere but you buy them near the lows you're sitting on a pretty huge gain if you bought them near the top you're sitting on a rather large loss but as it stands right now after reporting their q4 earnings shares of tesla down by about five and three quarters percent we'll see how wall street digested the rest of the week and we'll be back on friday for our Fangstock Recap Show, and we'll cover anything that we might have missed in today's video. Until then, have a great week, and we'll see you again soon.